Much shalom to everyone. Today we're going to finish out the series on speaking to each other in psalms and songs of praise and spiritual songs, singing and striking the strings in our heart unto the Master. And before we get started, let's go ahead and pray. Father, I just ask today that you show each and every one of us, Father, the beauty and the truth in the depths of your word and in the depths of your language. That each of us, Father, might allow your shalom to rule in our hearts, to master us, Father, in every way. That each of us would fully decrease, that you might increase, that we all would realize that nothing in this world it even matters and to be friends in any respect with the world is to be at enmity with Elohim we thank you Yah for the opportunity for the gift that you've given us father of who you are in Yeshua's name we thank you hallelujah so again we're coming out of Ephesians 5 verse 19 and I would encourage each of you to watch parts one and part two before you watch part three, just because it brings so much more value to the scripture, this just this one verse in its entirety, but to the context that we're going to bring it back to at the end. And actually the context throughout. So again, I would encourage you to go back and watch part one and two. We're on the word melody, which is the Greek 5567. Solo, probably strengthened from sao, to rub or touch the surface. Compare 5597. To twitch or twang, that is, to play on a stringed instrument. Celebrate the divine worship with the music and accompanying odes. And this is actually the word here that our word psalms came from in the beginning. However, when we trace it back, we will see that it doesn't go to the same word that Psalms went to. It has its own Hebrew word. And so looking in 1 Samuel 16, 16, we see there in the middle, the Greek 55, 67. And looking at 1 Samuel 16, 16 on the bottom, we read in the King James, let our master now command thy servants, which are before thee, to seek out a man who is a cunning player on a harp. And it shall come to pass, when the evil spirit from Elohim is upon thee, that he shall play with his hand, and thou shall be well. So we can see our 5959 there in the purple. Looking in the Strong's at the Hebrew 5959, we see it's Nagan, a primitive root, properly to thrum, that is, beat a tune with the fingers especially to play on a stringed instruments, hence generally to make music. In the ancient Hebrew lexicon, we see it at 2374 V. At the V, we have a noon, a gam, and a noon. It's play, to play a musical instrument. At the 2374, the action is to play, the concrete is music. And we see that it comes from the noon gam, the bright sound of music. After going back and checking the phonetic cognates and some of the etymology of this word as it actually came up through time, um, it's, it seems to me like the ancient Hebrew lexicon by Benner is correct. It comes from the noon gam. The noon gam, the action is shine, that concrete is morning. So we see that, again, it's a noon, a gam, and a noon, and it comes from the noon gam. So one of the places that we see this word used is in 1 Samuel 16, 23. And Samuel, we're speaking of David here, and Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. And the spirit of Yah came upon David from that day onwards. And Samuel rose and went to Ramah. So the spirit of Yah was upon David from that day onwards. He was experiencing the staff. He had this 
intimate relationship, this iron lamb with Yah Elohim, with the spirit of Yah. And the spirit of Yah turned aside from Saul, and an evil spirit from Yah troubled him. And Saul's and the servants of Saul said to him, Look now, an evil spirit from Elohim is troubling you. Please let our master command your servants who are before you to seek out a man who is a skilled player, who has an intimate knowledge of how to play from a place in his heart that he can play a melody unto the master that will drive away the terrifying, fearful, evil spirit that is troubling Shaul, who is a skilled player on the lyre. And it shall be that when the evil spirit from Elohim is upon you, that he shall play with his hands, and you be well. And Shaul said to his servants, Please get me a man that plays well and bring him to me. So he needs to be able to strum this melody well. He needs to be able to play it tobe. And the any, only way that he can play it in such a manner is if he's got the spirit of Yah Elohim with him. One of the servants answered and said, Look, I have seen a son of Yishai, the Bethlehemite, who knows how to play, a brave one, a man of battle, a, and skilled in words, and a handsome man, and Yah is with him. He is a brave one. He is a gabor. He is a warrior. He is one that can prevail, because even the elect would be deceived if they were not warriors. And he's a man of battle. He's skilled in words. He has the understanding and the ability to discern between two or more things because he is the seed from the house that comes under the king of righteousness. And Yah is with him. He has the revelation of the shepherd and he has been given through his upbringing the revelation of what to do as a shepherd. So Shaul sent messengers to Yishai and said, Send me your son Dawid, who is with the sheep, which is where the shepherd belongs. And Yishai took a donkey loaded with bread and a skin of wine and a young goat and sent them by his son Dawid to Shaul. And Dawid came to Shaul and stood before him, and he loved him greatly. And he became his armor bearer, and he loved him greatly. We're going to see a big change. Shaul therefore sent to Yishai, saying, Please let Dawid stand before me, for he has found favor in my eyes. And it came to be, whenever the evil spirit from Elohim was upon Shaul, that David would take the lyre and play it with his hand. Then Shaul would become refreshed and well and the evil spirit would leave him. There's a place in the heart of those who fall underneath the king of righteousness, who are being made into kings and priests, as the anointed one here plays, that come, it comes from a place in our heart, a place of complete shalom, allowing Yah to master our hearts. And so Dawid was a man after Yah's own heart. And from the day he was anointed onwards, he experienced the staff of Yah himself. So after this, we read about David going out to battle with Goliath. And we kind of come back in here at 1 Samuel 18, verses 6 through 11. And it came to be as they came in, as David was returning from striking the Philistine, that the women came out from all the cities of Yisrael, singing and dancing, to meet Shaul the sovereign with tambourines, with joy, and with musical instruments. And the women sang as they danced, and said, Shaul struck his thousands, and Dawid his ten thousands. And Shaul was very wroth, and this matter was evil in his eyes. And he said, To Dawid they had given ten thousands, and to me they have given thousands. So what more for him except the rain? Well, he already had the rain. But I've read that we should rejoice with those who rejoice, and we should weep with those who weep, and we should we should have a place of joy in our hearts for 
for each and every one of our brethren. And from that day on, Shaul eyed Dawid, and it came to be on the next day that the evil spirit from Elohim came upon Shaul, and he prophesied inside the house, while Dawid was playing on the lyre with his hand as usual, and the spear was in the hand of Shaul, and Shaul hurled the spear, for he said, Let me strike Dawid even to the wall. But twice David withdrew from his presence. And so we see right here how at one point he loved him greatly, and in verse 8 here we see that he was very wroth, or he was greatly wroth. It's the same word, because this is what jealousy among the brethren, the me, 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 and the I, 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 no matter what somebody else has, if it's their turn, if it's your turn, we need to come out of this place where it's all about us and it's all about him. I mean, Shaul obviously messed up when he didn't do, put everything under the ban he was supposed to put under the ban, and then he listened to the people and he didn't, you know, he, we all know the story. You can go back to First Samuel, I think it's 15, and read it. Um, so there are certain things we receive consequences for. There's certain, you know, there's well, we've received consequences. That's just as simple as that. I mean, even Dawid had consequences when it came to Bathsheba. But this jealousy that is between the brethren, this place of it has to be all about me, or this part is any part of it, any part of it that is about us, and it's not fully and solely from a place in our hearts that bringing forth the shalom of Yah and allowing him to be master over it is not of Yah. And it will kill. We're going to be killing our own brethren with this type of attitude. And as it goes on, we see Shaul constantly hunting David down. Is that really how we're supposed to be living? I think if this is a prime example of how not to be living. So before we take a really good look at the reason why we're not supposed to be living this way, I just wanted to turn real quick to the ancient Hebrew lexicon, to the word jealous, and it's at 1428. It's at the E line there. You can see zealous, zealousy, zealous, you know. The E, it's a kuf, a noon, and an L. Zealous, the parent bird will guard over and protect the nest and eggs from predators. Man can guard over the family, wife, and possessions in a positive way, protect from the enemy, or in a negative way, by not trusting or to desire to have another possessions, another place, another's praise, another's power, whatever Yah has given someone else. At the 1428, we see it's a kuf and a noon. The action is to acquire the concrete as nest and the abstract is zealous. The pictograph kuf is a picture of the sun at the horizon and the gathering of the light. The noon is a picture of a seed. Combine these mean gathering for the seeds. The parent birds go about gathering materials to build a nest where they will raise their seeds, their eggs. So we are gathering for the seeds of Yah so that they can come unto him. Doesn't necessarily mean gathering in a physical sense of possessions, though it can here. It talked about possessions. But when we build this nest and we build this place as a parent bird would guard over their children, it's a place, as it says, of protection, of guarding from predators. Bur as people, we should be rejoicing with those who rejoice and weeping with those who weep. Because one day we're all going to coof, be at this new day, these seeds that are gathered unto Elohim, and we need to be protecting and guarding over the things of Yah, the people of Yah, all along the way. This last attitude here, that in my opinion, links itself right up to pride, is probably the last and hardest one to uproot and pluck out from us. Because 
We need to fully decrease and dying completely and totally and fully to the flesh, not wanting what we want, but allowing Yah to have what he wants in our world, in our lives. It's not, it's not an easy thing. But if we had this, there'd be some people out there with some serious power, the power of Yah to heal and to drive out things. Just as Dawid was able to drive these this spirit away from Saul until he came to this place of jealousy because it's such a deep-rooted thing. So what does this melody that we play to the master from in our hearts, what does it, what does it mean? We saw that it came from the noon gam, and of course it had a noon at the end. So the noon is the ancient pictograph noon. This actually is from the front of Jeff Benner's Ancient Hebrew Lexicon is a picture of a seed sprout representing the idea of continuing to a new generation. This pictograph has the meanings of continue, perpetuation, offspring, or heir. We see it in the ancient Hebrew lexicon at 1313. The concrete is sprout and the abstract is continue. The pictograph noon is a picture of a seed. Combine these mean seed of seed. The seed is the continuation of life from the parent plant. This cycle continues generation after generation. So we here we see we are, there's a group of people that are really the seed of the seed that contain the seed that will continue on. And we, we, pat, we water and we nurture the seed in the next generation so that it can be a continual cycle unto Yah. Multiply and fill the earth, not for Hasatan. Second letter is the gam. The earliest known pictograph for this letter is the gam and is a picture of a foot. The modern Hebrew name for this letter is gimel, an adopted root. The original name to this letter is most likely gam, the parent root of gimel. This letter is the origin of the Arabic letter gim and the Greek gamma, supporting the theory that the original name for the letter did not include the L. I concur. The word gam means to gather together as a group of animals gathering at the watering hole to drink. The pictograph script for the word gam is a gam mem. The gam is a foot representing walk and the mem is water. Combine these mean a walk to the water. The letter gam has the meaning of walk, carry, gather. The sound associated with this letter is a G as in go. So we see the gam in the ancient Hebrew lexicon at 1059. Again, it's a walk to the water. The place I really want to point it out because we're really talking about speaking to each other in psalms and hymns and songs of praise, singing and striking the chords of our heart unto the master. So we're striking the chords of our heart and it's this is all about the brethren. And this is what this looks like. It's in Psalm 133, and I've put it there in the King James. You can look up any of these words. Behold, how tobe and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell, to remain, to be together. That word can also mean to marry. Dwell together in achad, in unity. This together is actually the word Gam. So when we dwell, we remain, we are together with the brethren in unity. We are on this walk to the water. We are on a walk to the water of life. We can see at the end of verse 3 there. For there Yah commanded the blessing. Where? Mount Zion. Where? Where the first resurrection is going to be. What's the blessing? Life forever. That's where the river of life is. So we are supposed to be on this walk to the water together, unified with each other. This is how we're headed together to this life forever. We don't do that without the complete shalom and trust of Yah in our heart. It's not a melody unto the master. If there's any part of the melody that's a melody 
unto ourselves. It doesn't work that way. Part of us is still about us and we need to completely die to us, which means to be completely obedient to the Torah and absolutely in the Torah and the instructions in absolutely every respect. But it goes so much deeper because you want the same thing. You desire the same thing. You're on this walk to the water together. Revelation 22 verses 1 through 7. And he showed me a river of water of life, the place that we as brethren dwelling in unity are on a walk to, back to the water of life, clear as crystal coming from the throne of Elohim, even the Lamb. In the middle of its street and on either side of the river was the tree of life. Just as it was there in the beginning, we saw the door, we strove to enter it, and we have gone through back to the water, to the water of life, to the tree of life, which bore twelve fruits, each yielding its fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And no longer shall there be any curse. Isn't that what we really should want for everybody that we're on this walk to the water with? And the throne of Elohim and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. Are we tired of groaning and crying out for this rest that comes from being back as it was in the beginning? And they shall see his face, and his name shall be upon their foreheads, just like the ones who groaned and cried out in Yehezkel. And night shall be no more, and they shall have no need of a lamp or the light of the sun, because Yah Elohim shall give them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. And he said to me, These words are trustworthy and the truth. And Yah Elohim of the set-apart prophets has sent his messengers to show his servants what has to take place with speed. See, I am coming speedily. Blessed is he who guards the words of the prophecy of the book. No adding to the words, no taking away from the words. The only thing we are adding unto ourselves is the, to walk in the ways of Yah. The only thing we should be subtracting is the things that are not of Yah. There's a replacement on both ends. A little later on in the same chapter, Revelation 22:17, who is calling? The spirit and the bride say come because the seed has been planted and the bride and she's playing this the woes that would be the bride and she's playing this melody because she's filled with the Ruach HaKodesh and she's able to to speak in these psalms and hymns and songs of praise striking and making melody in her heart unto the master because the seed that's in her is completely overtaken everything else anything that was of the other seed is gone and anything of the seed of Yah has completely replaced it in her heart. Come and he who hears let him say come and he who thirsts come who thirsts for the water of life and he who desires it take the water of life without paying for I witness to everyone hearing the words of the prophecy of the book if anyone adds to them Elohim shall add to him the plagues that are written in this book. And if anyone takes away from the words of the book of the prophecy, Elohim shall take away his part from the book of life and out of the set-apart city which are written in this book. We cannot want to see that happen to absolutely anyone. He that bears witness of these matters says, Yes, I am coming speedily. Amen. Yes, come, Master Yahshua, who, Yah, who came to rescue us. The favor of our master, Yah, who came to rescue us, the anointed priest, prophet, and king, be with the set-apart ones. Amen. So before we go back to Ephesians 5, where we started at, let's take a look at the same concept in Colossians chapter 3. We'll be reading verses 1 
through 17. And let's just see how this looks in all practicality. Verse 1. If then you were raised with Messiah, if you have buried, been buried in immersion with Messiah, and were raised from that, leaving the old man behind, we have put ourselves into the place where we have the opportunity to be now in the first resurrection and the millennial reign. So if you were raised in that immersion into the name of Yeshua Messiah, seek the matters which are above, where Messiah, the anointed high priest, great prophet, and king, is seated at the right hand of Elohim. He's not literally sitting there. It's a Hebrew idiom for his power, his strength, and his authority, which is his word, which is the elder Batah. So it's seated, dwells, remains with him. It comes from Psalm 110.1, which we know is the Psalm of the Melchizedek. So where is this power coming from? To be raised with Messiah in the first resurrection. What does that look like? It's underneath the king of righteousness as a king and a priest. Mind the matters above, not those which are on the earth. Don't have the wisdom of the lower matters of the earth, but the wisdom of the higher matters of the spirit. For you have died, and your life has been hidden with Messiah, Elohim. When Messiah, who is our life, he has to be every single piece and part that we feed on because we're not going to have strength in this life from eating something, having this life that is not him. Who is our life is manifested. Then you also shall be manifested with him in esteem. <laughs> Therefore, put to death your members which are on the earth, whoring, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, and greed of gain, which is idolatry. These things need to be subtracted from who we used to be to who we are now. Because of these, the wrath of Elohim is coming upon the sons of disobedience. So there is the wrath is coming on those who are disobedient. And I would fall into that and say, passion, a me, 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 and an I, 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 in which you also once walked when you lived in them. We don't live in that anymore. That isn't our life anymore. And if we're going to be on a walk to the water with the brethren, they can't be any part of our life because none of them have to do with Yah. But now also put off all of these displeasure, wrath, evil, blasphemy, filthy talk from your mouth. Do not lie to each other. Why? Because those that lie are children of their father, the devil, who has been a liar since the very beginning. Because he took what was the truth, he took the pure language and he put a spin on it. He twisted it. Since you have put off the old man with his practices and have put on the new one who is renewed in knowledge because we are to be renewed by the transforming of our minds. Be transformed by the renewing of our minds according to the likeness of him who created him. Not in some other likeness, but in the image and the representation of of Yah, shining forth through our words and actions, speaking those things that would bear good fruit. Where there is not Greek and Yehudi, circumcised and uncircumcised, foreigner, Scythian, slave free, but Messiah is all and in all. Therefore, as chosen ones of Elohim, set apart and beloved, these are the things you now need to add as you get rid of these other things that are gone, don't walk and live in them anymore. Put on compassion, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, patience, bearing with one another and forgiving each other. If anyone has a complaint against another, indeed, as Messiah forgave you, so also should you. But above all, 
these love which is the bond of perfection Lo is love obeying the Torah absolutely obeying the instructions of Yah is loving Yah teaching others to do the same is loving Yah it's shining forth through words and actions and speaking to these other these these things that put that out for other people so they can resonate with it but not everybody's on step 352 some people are on step two and so that's why we have to be compassionate kind humble meek patient forgiving so that we can be on this walk to the water there'll be some that are walking behind us and some that are walking right next to us it's just the way that it is but we're all headed for the exact same place it doesn't mean we live disobedience or talk disobedience that's not the point so now we're going to look at verse 15 and 16 in particular so in verse 15 we see let the peace of elohim rule in your hearts to which indeed you were called in one body the gathering of the men into one body the body of the Melchizedek. You cannot have a Melchizedek head and some other body and be filled with thanks. So as we would expect, we see that in Numbers 6.26, we find our word for peace, which is Yah lift his, up his face upon you and give you his shalom. And so we see shalom down there is 28.45 C completeness shalom a greeting as a desire for completeness to another so we see that at the 2845 the action is to complete made whole or complete by adding or subtracting so we need to let the peace of Elohim rule in our hearts as the authority that's inside of us because we were all called into one body underneath the Melchizedek high priest greatest prophet and king of kings and we need to be filled with thanks because of this not with pride not with jealousy not with whoring and uncleanliness and everything that was listed above but we need to be filled with the, completely filled with the shalom of Yah so that we can pass that along to others. So what does that look like to allow that to rule as the authority inside of us? We can't trace it back in the Greek because there is no trace back for this word. So I actually had to use the Hebrew New Testament. You can see that in the middle there where it reads from right to left. And in the purple, we see the word shalot. A primitive root to dominate that is governed by implication to permit are we going to permit him the ancient Hebrew lexicon 2843 V to rule to be over or have mastery over another the action is rule the concrete is master the abstract is realm what realm are we living in what what is the real world to us I find it very interesting that it, the English word salute comes from it so we see that this shalom of Elohim, this completeness of peace and rest, which we're groaning out, is, has a mastery, a complete mastery over who we are. And it's the realm that we are living in. Those of the priesthood who will eventually be the bride have allowed the shalom of El to have mastery in their hearts and to be the authority that is inside. Those things which are not of him and of the old man have been completely subtracted and those things that are of Elohim that we read have been added so that we can all be on the walk to the water together. Verse 16 let the word of Messiah dwell in you richly. Let the seed that has been planted, 
Messiah's seed, everything in its proper order from the elder, the ta that we use to play this melody to Yah from inside of our hearts as we speak and sing with the brethren to the brethren. Let it dwell richly in us so that we are able to teach and admonish one another in all wisdom, singing with pleasure in our hearts to the master in psalms and songs of praise and spiritual songs. We cannot be sending out something else because it is going to affect everybody all the way down the line. It's sending out a, I'm going to say it, it's sending out a vibration. It's sending out a frequency into the air that affects everybody down the line because life and death are in the power of the tongue. So I want to take a quick look at this word wisdom. We're going to look at it more in the future. It is the, the Greek Strong's 4678. It is Sophia from 4680. Wisdom, higher or lower, worldly or spiritual. And so we see that we are going to either be of this higher, spiritual, wise, walking circumspectly wisdom, or of this lower worldly wisdom. This word Sophia is a smack in the face. And if any of you know who Sophia is, or if you don't, you can look her up. But it is what's coming. And it's a smack in the face to Yah. Sophia claiming she has a soul. The UL meaning a universal language. Yah's language is the universal language. Yah's language. What Yah has said is what we are to be following. There is not more. There is only one way to Yah. And that is through him himself who came to rescue us. So in the description box below, I'm going to put um, a video to Sophia. Some stuff will really stand out in the middle and some stuff will really stand out at the end. Um, this is what, this is what's in the works and this is what's it's planned. And this is why we have to be so enveloped and complete and at Shalom, letting Yah master our everything that's in, be the authority that's inside and be the mastery over our hearts, or we are going to fall prey to this. Because it says even the elect would be deceived if they weren't warriors. It says if that were possible, but it really means that they aren't warriors in the family of heads. That's what that means, that we are whole and complete and mature stocks. And you can rest assured that those that will be in the first resurrection in the priesthood, that will be the bride, the ones that are crying, come and drink, all you who are thirsty. This is a smack in the face to ya. Yeah. Just, just watch it, and that way you'll have some kind of idea. There's really no way to escape it. And it should drive us to obedience, not to some craziness, but it should want us to be so in line with what Yah is doing. Because he's the only one that can cover us, protect us, and save us from, from what's to come. We are most quite literally going to be walking with one group of people or with another. We are to be like-minded. They will be like-minded, and we will be like-minded. And let's go back to where this whole series started, uh, Ephesians chapter 5, and let's read through from verses 1 through 21. Become then imitators of Elohim as beloved children. Do the things, seek the things, and do the things, and think the things that are above, where Messiah is, as beloved children of Elohim. Walk in love. Walk to the water in love. As the anointed priest, high priest, greatest prophet, and king of kings, has also loved us and gave himself for us. Are we willing to just get over ourselves and give ourselves for the brethren a gift and an offering to Elohim for a sweet smelling fragrance but whoring 
and uncleanness, all uncleanness, our greed of gain, let it not even be named among you, as is proper among the set-apart ones. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather thanksgiving, be filled with thanks for the shalom that Yah has given you in mastering your heart, the authority being the authority that's inside of you. For this you know, that no one who whores, nor unclean one, nor one greedy of gain who is an idolater, has any inheritance of the reign of Messiah and Elohim. First resurrection is off the table. Let no one deceive you with empty, vain words, because the whole world is deceived. The whole world is led astray, unless you are the elect and you are warriors for Yah Elohim. For because of this, the wrath of Elohim comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not become partakers, do not be co-joined, do not be fellow laborers with them. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Master. If you are in, headed towards the first resurrection, the priesthood of the Master, you shine forth through words and through action. That is our praise unto others and unto the Master. Walk as children of the light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, because Elohim is all goodness and all righteousness and all truth, proving what is well-pleasing to the Master. And have no fellowship with the fruitless works of darkness, but rather convict them. For it is a shame even to speak of what is done by them in secret, but all matters being convicted are manifested by the light, for whatever is manifested is light. Light manifests everything. The light of Yah manifests everything. This is why he says, Wake up, you who sleep, and arise from the dead, and Messiah shall shine on you. He's going to call us one day to wake up. Because our dead body will be raised just like his dead body was. See then that you walk exactly, not as unwise, but as wise. Redeeming the time. We can see the door, but are we striving to enter into it? They could see the door at Mount Sinai, but did they strive to enter into it? They had the door in their midst. He's still the door. Are we striving to enter into it? There will be a millennial reign where people, there'll be one more chance to get in that door. Will people strive to enter into it? Because the days are wicked. So then do not be foolish, but understand what the desire of Yah is. And do not be drunk with wine, in which is loose behavior, unsavedness, but be filled every part of and peace of the Ruach HaKodesh should fill your being. Speak to each other, speaking to each other in Psalms, the plucking of the good fruit from the tree, and hymns and actually songs of praise in the scriptures that shining forth through words and actions, and spiritual songs which the remnant sings to press us back to the beginning because we're on a walk back to the water that was from the beginning, the living water. Singing and striking the strings in your heart to the Master. Giving thanks always for all to Elohim the Father in the name of our Master, Yah, who came to rescue us, the anointed High Priest, greatest prophet, and King of Kings, subjecting yourself to each other in the fear of Elohim. We can't subject ourselves to each other in the fear of Elohim if we're not subjecting ourselves to each other in the fear of Elohim because not only do we have some of these uncleanness, fruitless works, we can't get 
mixed up with. We have to subtract those. But we can't subject ourselves to each other. If we're so full of ourselves, we can't get over ourselves. We need to be so full of the shalom that should master our hearts that we are able to walk in this love with each other because we, we want as many as can go back to the water of life. Hallelujah.